welcome to the Chosen Few Expat Show. I'm Alonzo. Today we have with us a guest who's a native Panamanian and a realtor in Panama. Let's welcome Rita Lescano to the show. Hi, Rita. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Alonzo. Yeah, we very much appreciate your time today and um, appreciate the information that you're going to share with our subscribers today. So um, with that, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Um, what area in Panama are you from? And what made you decide to become a realtor? Yes, um, my background, I grew up in Chiriqui. It's a little town in the west side of the country. And um, I'm the middle one, I have two brothers. And I started working in a company that sells computer here in Panama, like for eight years, that's my sales background. And after that, we, I'm an entrepreneur and I have a little company that it's a cleaning company. So one of the things that we decided as uh, my husband and I is um, to diversify our business and uh, real estate seems to be a very good um, match for what we already are doing. So um, back in March, I started this, uh, this journey. I'm in, I'm part of the REMAX Central uh, office here in Panama. So I'm a single agent, and, but I have a very, a lot of support in this beautiful company that we have in here. My, my broker has like uh, more than 20 years experience. So even though I'm a starring, I have support for a lot of people that know how about the business. Okay. Uh, ¿Cuántos años tú vives en Panamá, en la ciudad de Panamá? Uh, you want me to answer in English or in Spanish? Well, maybe you can tell the subscribers what I asked you and then you can answer in English. Okay, I have lived in here in the city more than 15 years, Alonso. Very good Spanish, yeah. No, oh, thank you. Necesito más practicar, but uh, okay. I'm working on it. We, we can we can practice. <laughs> <laughs> So I can practice my English and you can practice the Spanish. That'll be very good. Yeah, I always try to throw in a little bit of Spanish for our subscribers. I mean, very important. You all, we got to try to learn the language. Um, we come to Panama, about 80% of Panamanians speak Spanish. So um, you can make it without it with Google Translate and things like that these days. But you really should at least try to learn some of the language. It's going to help your experience a whole, whole lot. Um, so thank you, Rita, for answering that. And um, so I know you, you work in the office in the city. So is that pretty much the area that you specialize in? Do you have uh, offices or colleagues in other areas of the country, like maybe back in your home area of Chiriqui or some other areas? So if our subscribers are interested in housing in those areas, then how can we get them connected with uh, someone else within your company that can help them investigate those options? Yeah, of course. Here. I specialize here in the city because it's where I live and it's easier for me to give the service, you know, a complete service that we have to do. And, uh, and actually, yes, we have a colleague in Chiriqui. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, Rita, you know what? I'm looking for a house in, in Chiriqui. And tell me where I can go. And we have some people there that we can refer them and they're going to receive them and, and, you know, and do all the process. So um, here in the city, we work especially with um, special areas like Costa del Este, Santa Maria, Punta Pacifica. Those are very high-end uh, properties that we can find in there. But here in the city, I have a lot of options for everybody. For everybody's budget, we have something here. Okay, that's very good because we have a lot of people who are interested in making the move to Panama. So they're going to want to know what all their options are. Um, I know you just mentioned home for uh, purchase. So let's start there. So can you give our subscribers an idea of the price range they can expect? Just say um, in the city and in the mountains and in the beach, if they're going to purchase a home, kind of like in the low, medium, and high range, is generally what they can expect to, to pay. Of course, I so. Here in the city, you can find prices range from 40K to 180K. And you can buy, a, like if this is the low range, mm -hmm. mid range goes from 
81 to 500K, and the high range goes from one 500K to a million or above, you know. At the beach, you can find houses from 70K to 200K in the low range. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the mid range, 201K to 500K. And then the high end will go from 500K and above. And the mountains is pretty much the same, right? That's the beach. Oh, okay. Those are the ranges that we manage here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so do you all deal much with um, rentals also, long-term rentals? And if so, can you also provide a similar um, price ranges for the city, the beach, and the mountains for rentals? Yes, we do have a rental for, here the contracts for rentals are um, like uh, for a year. Mm -hmm. So we have a, the low range goes from $380 mid range will go from eight hundred to $2,500. And then go to the high end will go from the $2,500 to $8K or above. Mm -hmm. At which we find a little bit different prices right? there. They'll go from a, the low range, we had it at um, $1,200 to $2,500. The mid one will go to $2,500 to forty, four hundred. I mean, 4000 sorry. Mm, right. And then um, the highest will go from the far 400K and above. Yeah. Okay. Mountains, you can find a little bit uh, lower prices. At mountains will be around the same as the city. OK. So um, what do you think, and it may be too early to tell, but what do you think is the potential impact of COVID on the real estate market in Panama going forward? Do you think that's more of an advantage for buyers or sellers um, going forward? In our opinion, you know, like the, with the whole COVID uh, situation that we had here, um, the impact was like at the beginning when we have the most of the strict quarantine, like no one can go out and, and, and do anything. So, but after they lifted, the market reactivated the rest immediately. Oh, that's good news. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, Panama is a resilient economy. We, we are driven by the US dollar, which is give us the stability. And um, the current, market buyer is like it's heaven for those investors that want to capitalize and you know get good opportunities mm -hmm. also panama is being like the second best country in the region and around the world to be retired and live in you know like it's an international living publication they, they mentioned the panama is like the best option <laughs> number one yeah in the world actually it's, not just in the region they ranked it number one in the world in 2019 uh which we told our subscribers about in our how a uh, why move to panama part one video so yes yeah. Yeah. yeah so right now if you're thinking on um, moving to panama it's the time to buy because this is the moment for buyers to get very good deals if we can get good deals here. And uh, I mean, don't think it's too much. Just take advantage oh. of this moment. So if, even though it will be a good time to buy, if a person were coming in with the mentality of, I don't want to buy right away, I definitely want to come in and rent, is it more of a situation for them now uh, with COVID where the renter have more of the advantage or the landlord? in terms of the pricing or the negotiation? It's, gonna, it's a good time also for rent because rent, uh, rent prices are going down. So you can get a very nice, uh, you know, spaces here in the city that are already very good prices too. So if you're not ready to buy and you're coming to Panama, you 
to check it out, to see if I like it, to see if I can merge with the culture and everything. It's a good idea to run for a while, and then you take your decision. But here you can get very good deals and, and rent too. Yeah, and that definitely lines up with our personal experience. Um, <clears throat> just to tell you and our subscribers about that, um, we did have a deal in place to rent um, a condo, basically pre-COVID. Of course, COVID shut everything down. The airport closed in Panama, I think it was around March 16th or so, so couldn't get down there. So now with everything lifted, um, definitely wanted to try to come back and renegotiate uh, that rental price. And we were successful in getting that lowered um, in this post-COVID environment. So that lines up with what Rita's telling us here in terms of it being more advantageous right now for renters or buyers, you know, whichever it is you prefer to do. Yeah, so, and you know what, I want to, sorry to interrupt you. No, it's fine. Here, one of the, the package that I offer for my customers are that we offer the COVID-free area where you're going to move. I mean, if you're buying or renting a house, mm -hmm. we are going to make sure that that area is COVID-free because as I told you at the beginning, we have a clean company. So we offer a free disinfection of the, the, oh, okay. the apartment or house that you're going to get yet. Okay. That's something extra there I can offer you. <laughs> so, um, do when in terms in terms of home ownership, do foreigners basically have the same rights as, as native Panamanians when it comes to purchasing a home? Yes, they do. Actually, when you purchase a house, you get the deed of trust of the property you're buying. Okay. And what about uh, property taxes? I've heard about there may be some advantage in terms of property taxes um, when it comes to purchasing a home. Can you tell us uh, what you know about that? Yes. Uh, regarding taxes here, Panama pay like a very conservative taxes um, ranges um, regarding the region. Mm -hmm. uh, we have very special prices I mean, it's a like um, it's a law that we have. The people that purchase a house that is less than thirty k, they don't pay taxes. Like it's zero percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if it goes from thirty to two hundred and fifty k, then you got to pay zero point six percent. And then if it goes from two hundred and fifty k to five hundred k the tax is going to be a 0.8 percent and it goes above by from the k it's one percent okay and um i don't know you may or may not know much about this area because it's dealing more with the financing but um can you tell us well, what what you know about uh, the mortgage application process and financing with the banks in Panama and how that would work for a foreigner that's coming in to try to buy a property in Panama. Yeah, mortgage is managed directly by the bank industry. They have their own, uh, own the, the older, own, I don't know, the contract? And yes. The name is. <laughs> yeah, contract would be. They, they manage everything, all the whole process of licensing or uh, the lease or uh, the mortgage. It's managed by them, mm -hmm. and and they can finance like from seventy to ninety eight percent of the loan of the value of the the the, the mortgage is of the the property that you're gonna buy. They can give you the seventy to ninety eight percent of that. And the interest they charge, it depends también, also. Yeah, also, Espanol, huh? Yeah, girls, my uh, mind. The, the interest they charge you will depend on the amount, right? And, and the rental that I gave you before, and it goes from 3.5% to 8%. Oh, depending wow. On the product. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are one or two key pieces of advice that you can give uh, people who are looking to become expats in Panama. There's a lot of people I know here in the U.S. right now who are looking to leave. They're looking at Panama as an option. They're watching this video, videos on our channel and others. They're considering Panama, places like Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador. So what couple of pieces of advice could you give people who are looking at 
Panama and why should they choose Panama over some of these other destinations? Okay, one of the things, like the most important thing here, when you're gonna take a decision that you're gonna move to a new country and you're gonna live there, first, you need to get to know the culture, get to know the people, get to know everything, how it works, how the legal part works. So first thing, you have to get a, a professional licensed realtor that can help you and will give you that security you need. Right. When you're when you're going to move somewhere, you know you don't know the country. You need someone that takes you around, that show you around, they let you know how things work here, and you need to rely on that person. So the first thing is to you need to get someone that licensed, that legally re recognized as a realtor they will help you get get through you know the process okay. and um most important i think is that <laughs> yes so and well you know panama panama is a beautiful country people is very warm here we are very welcoming people and um we like to to new to, to get to know new people so that part is going to be easy for you. <laughs> yes, very friendly people in Panama. No, no question about that. So um, we have a segment here um, called Hechos Divertidos de Panama. It's fun facts of Panama that I add to the show. So just something just to try to educate people since we're trying to move to Panama and just different fun facts. So uh, one thing about Panama is that the first ship to uh, across the Panama Canal is the SS Ancon on August 15th, 1914. And Rita, as you know, and we covered in our uh, interview with Virgil Blades, that uh, Ancon Hill in Panama City also bears that same name, um, the hill over which you can look over the whole city of Panama, and that's a tropical rainforest within Panama's uh, city limits. So yeah. that's one, one fact about Panama. And then we also have another segment here called Panama Sabias, which is like a did you know? Uh -huh. Oh, Rita, did you know that the San Blas Islands archipelago has 365 islands? Oh. So if you wanted to visit one island every day of the year, you could do that. Did you know? Uh -huh. I didn't know the amount of islands in a month from here. You know, it's very nice, very, very interesting. 365 islands in the San Blas Island. What I can tell you that San Blas is a beautiful place. You want to go to paradise. Yeah, we've been trying to get there. We haven't made it yet, but it's very, very, very high on our list of things to do <laughs> yeah. in Panama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to go to the volcano Baru. Oh, yeah. Baru Volcano. You, you got to go there. Oh, too. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't, I don't know about making that climb, though, uh, you know, five I'm hours. Really you know, I haven't do it yet, but I'm planning to on a car because you, you can get there to the top from Boquete. Mm -hmm. They have a road that can take you there. So, oh, I didn't know you can go up by car. I thought you had to yeah. walk up the mountain. No, no, no. Uh, no. They, they already can take you there in a car. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> My dad climbed that Baru Vulcano. And he was 65 when he did it. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So. He got to see go. that beautiful sunrise and everything from up there. And, and the oceans. Yes. Other thing that you got to do when you come here in Alonso, if you're planning to go to the volcano, then you you have to go and do the coffee tour. Oh, yes. Because we have the geisha, the second place that we go, you know? It's from there, from Sydney. Very expensive, best coffee in the world. Oh, yes, it is. El mejor café del mundo. Del mundo. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, Rita, um, we want to thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Thanks for the information you were able to share with our subscribers. And um, uh, we'll be sure to put Rita's information down in the description below. Uh, so you all can contact her if you're interested in purchasing or renting properties in Panama. So Thank thanks you again, very much, Rita. Everyone. All right, have a good day.
You too. Bye. Bye.